All right, I'm uh, down in my basement and what has turned into a boat shop. And uh, you can see I have my picture of my sailing ship on the wall for inspiration. Um, when we, in the last video, uh, I was doing lofting. I'm gonna try not to trip over the vacuum. Um, and I was cutting out the, the stations uh, after lofting them up using the numbers in the book, Canoe Craft. And uh, this station that I worked on initially was station zero, which is in the middle. This is pretty tight because I've got these all mounted on this strong back, but this is, as you might remember, the one where I had the two inch lines squares marked in the on the board, and then I went to use the graph paper instead. I, I just couldn't get those lines accurate enough. Anyway, so that's that's station zero. That was the biggest one, and that was the first one that I did. And uh, pretty tight quarters here. Um, let's come around the side here. You can see that I've cut out all the stations. I lofted all of them up on the graph paper, and then uh, cut out the graph paper, and then traced it onto the plywood, and made each of the the various stations. So your middle station here is station zero and uh, you can see that I've got a center line marked on there. Maybe you can see it. And um, so then the stations are placed on the strong back. Now the strong back is 16 foot long but I'm building a 15 foot canoe so uh, I'm gonna have room left over on the ends which is fine. I don't think it'll get in the way because when I made these these stations or these frames, you you may remember I said they I thought they looked like mushrooms and that they have these bottom parts here that actually attach onto the strong back. And you can see here where I've put two by four in, um, and then I've screwed the uh, screwed the stations each one of them into to there. Now in order to get that straight. Uh, the first thing I did on the strong back, being that it's a 16 foot long strong back, I took a chalk line and I went right down the middle of it. This one is 10 inches wide. Um, my, my feet on my stations are 8 inches wide, so I, I figured I'd have plenty of room even if my strong back wasn't completely straight and true. But when I took the chalk line to it, I got an exact center line. Um, or at least a straight line whether or not it's exactly in the center or not. That's the point. And then you mark all your stations with a center line on them. I think you can see that here. And you just make that you just make that center line match up on the chalk line. Now the other thing that I did is I used 2x4 to um, place down on the uh, on my cross lines and I used a T-square so that I'd make sure and get hard right angles against the center line. Um, and these are all spaced a foot apart. That's the way this plan calls for this. Uh, that does make it a little tight when you go to screw these in, but I ended up figuring out that I could screw them in at an angle and keep the drill out of the way. So we, we've got them all placed. Now, the other thing that I'm noticing a little bit is that uh, there's a little bit of bend in some of the plywood. It's not absolutely perfectly straight and flat in places, even between stations um, zero and, and one here. Uh, I, I, and you can't tell probably with the camera, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's true that, that, that it's equidistance from like the shear lines down here to the next one. I'm going to use a batten on these that I'll probably staple on here just to just to trim them up and measure and uh, make sure that they're that they're equidistant in all respects uh, top to bottom and in the middle and you, when you start putting the stripping on you, you start putting it on on the on the shear line uh, where the gun well, gunnel is or will be and remember we're doing this upside down so we'll start on the on the shear line and run a strip all the way um, on each side and then we'll just build the strips up from there. Now I still haven't made the stems. I've cut out pieces for this and 
quite honestly, the book was wrong on one of the numbers when I was lofting up the the uh, the ends here. Uh, a quick Google sh search uh, verified that uh, I, I wasn't just doing something wrong myself. And I don't have this exactly the way I want them, but I'm going to laminate uh, some stems out of very thin wood, build them up on the on the ends of these um, end pieces. And we'll do that. We'll have to do that before we ever start doing any stripping. The other thing that I did is I went to Lowe's and uh, I found some pretty nice 16-foot cedar. Um, you got it laying down here along the side of the strong back. And at the moment, I've got three pieces, and they're they're one by six. Um, this adventure has uh, also caused us to buy a a new um, circular or a table saw, and um, I'm planning on ripping these cedar boards into quarter inch strips. Um, which is what I'm going to use for the actual planking when I start putting them on here. So um, it's a learning experience every day when I work on this, but so far I'm feeling like we're in pretty good shape. You can see even with the, these little thin battens that I've got up here that they're laying fairly true uh, even without being bent too much on, on the top of here. So, uh, so far so good.